Okay, hi, I'm Adam. This is going to be my video for fluid assignment three. I'm just going to make a new fluent assignment and go straight into design modeler. I already have it open here. I'm going to draw three horizontal lines like so. And I'm just going to dimension them real quick according to what's uh, in the assignment. Just make all three dimensions first and then you can do them real quickly. Point five seven four eight. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to make one more line spanning all of them and a construction point at the center. I'm going to add a constraint, I'm going to add a midpoint constraint, so that construction line with this. So now they're all oriented with, Z, with the origin at the very center of the wind tunnel. You could also do it um, starting at the origin at the leftmost point and going to the right, but I just chose to do it this way. Now draw four vertical lines like so. And and go back into constraints and make the midpoint like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna give all these dimensions. Um, I'll just copy these dimensions in. this is defined. We'll just draw it in. I haven't actually played, there's probably some sort of mirror feature, but um, for something this small, it's okay. We can just draw it in. Um, now I'm just going to delete these vertical supports in the middle. So it's one body. Let's see. I don't know why that got deleted. Whatever. Okay, so now we have the wind tunnel. Everything's fine. I got deleted. Yep, it's still fine. And then if we want to draw something in the center, uh, you just have to make sure its height is less than, um, what was that, 45 millimeters? Less than 45 millimeters in height. So we could do like, um, if we just want to do something simple, excuse me, we could do that and then dimensions to diameter, because that's what's most important. D19, yeah, so that's, yeah, let's just make that 0.04, because that's uh, less than 7.5%, which is the blockage ratio that we were instructed to not go over. So now that that's done, okay, we have to go to create surfaces from sketch. Select the sketch, hit generate. And yep, that's our surface. Now we'll open up the mesh. Okay. And we can close the design modeler as well. The meshing is opening. Okay. Um, for this, actually, um, let me just get rid of that circle. I'll just show you the default. But um, if you were going to do it with the obstacle in the center, you would just leave the circle in and do everything the same way. Um, yeah, let me do this quickly. Just for sake of simplicity, hit generate. Okay, that's good. The mesh should update, no? 
it's updated manually. Just takes some time. All right, so we have our mesh. Um, so I already created some mesh going on here. Let's just insert method. Apply. We'll make triangles. That's what Dr. Osbey did. Generate that. Okay, we've got some triangles. Then we can go back to general and make the element size. Doesn't have to be super big. I'll do 10 millimeters. It will actually take a little bit to mesh. You could you, sh you could also do 15. Um, they would go probably a lot faster, a little bit faster. This should not take too long. Okay, so this is a pretty fine mesh. We can go to edge select, name this velocity inlet, name this outlet or whatever you want to call it. Name this wind tunnel wall. And if you had something in the middle, you could just name it obstacle or shape or whatever you're whatever you're calling it. Okay, so let's double check those. That should all be good. We can let's update that and then we'll go into setup. And close workbench. There we go. That would have been bad. <laughs> okay, we'll do double precision. We'll do two processes. So we got a quad core or dual core. Dual core with two processes per core or whatever. So you could do more. But um, it, two is fine. It's almost done. Okay, so like Dr. Osbe said, make sure energy is on. Then we'll make it a K epsilon with enhanced wall pressure and thermal. Even though for the thermal, you're really not going to see much just because the velocity is quite low. And make sure. This should just be air. You could also put water, I guess. Um, but this is a wind tunnel. Okay, so velocity inlet should already define it as, yeah, type is a velocity inlet. We're gonna make that 10 meters per second. Thermal, 300 is fine. Pressure outlet. It's also pressure. Here for thermal, I did try. Um, I, I used the enthalpy equation to find because the, if the velocity increases, it, it gets to like 20 um, meters per second at the end. If you calculate the, the temperature change there, it would change by like half a degree. So even if you change it to like 255.5 or 300.5, it didn't seem to really have any effect on the thermal. Um, contour graphs, um, but we'll just leave that at 300. Well, let's let's see how it goes. Let me just make, let me see. Yeah, so the velocity increases by like 10 meters per second about. So let's just say it increases by half a percent, even though it would increase by even less. Um, but you'll see it's not really gonna do anything. Then wind tunnel wall, it should just be wall. Stationary. Okay. All right, to reference the values. Velocity inlet, 310, that's fine. Enthalpy is about 270,000, or 27,000, I think, yeah. 27 uh, kilojoules per kilogram at 300 uh, degrees Kelvin. Even though I didn't find that changing enthalpy really did anything either. Um, 
this is the value you would get. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll just leave that as it is for now. Doesn't hurt. We'll just initialize. Um, shouldn't need, should need like 100, 120 iterations or so. Okay, calculation complete only took 65. Nice. Um, so let's just go straight into contours. We will do contours of, yeah, pressure. We'll do everything. So this is the static pressure, which would be um, just pressure. We can also do Dynamic pressure, just like that. Total pressure, just like that. And if you want to change this, you can make it uh, float. Yeah, just make it, change it however you want. And then you can just hit copy button here and it'll copy the image straight. You can paste it into Word. Um, it's really just the same thing for velocity. Um, You don't want the wall, but you know, if you have the wall, it just really shows a no slip. And if we go to temperature, you'll see again, um, you've static and total is really just um, uniform across. Even though we changed the, the exit temperature by half a degree, it's still uniform. So that's leading me to think that maybe. Um, we're doing something a little off in the calculations. Maybe it should be showing temperature because, you know, it should be showing at least um, two, three oh, three hundred point five degrees at the end, but it's not showing that at all. Um, so that would be interesting to look into. Enthalpy, same thing. Okay. Now we can also do some plots. So yeah, all those graphs that I just showed. Um, that's for, that gives you all of these. And then, oops, if you want to make a plot, it's slightly different from anything, from the stuff we've done before. You could actually go into post to make the line um, through the center, but um, you can also do it just straight and fluent if you go to new surface line. Um, yeah, line, and then, sorry, you actually have to add up all the, uh, it's gonna be about, well, that's not right. It's gonna be a little less than, to, again, it matters since um, at the beginning I made the center of the wind tunnel um, the origin. So it's going to be from 1.9558 to 1.9558. Now, if you started the leftmost uh, part of the wind tunnel at the origin, then you would be going from 0 to 3.9116. Um, and we'll just do zero to zero because again, we made it at the origin. So the central line is at y equals zero. So we're gonna create, create that. Uh, you could also name it central line. I forgot, but um, we'll, so we'll, we'll do pressure, static pressure, um, just along, along the center line like so. Save plot and yeah, again, we can just change the 
axes. Like if you want to do the y float apply, say plot, something like that's fine. Um, total pressure is going to look kind of kind of weird, kind of irregular. Uh, dynamic pressure is going to basically be kind of like an inverse of total pressure. I mean the static pressure, kind of an inverted of that curve. Um, we can do velocity, velocity magnitude, again, across line four, say plot. Um, yep, goes up to about 26 meters per second maximum. If we look at the contour plots, you know, there's velocity. Oops, velocity here, 26 would be happening kind of right here where it goes into the, um, the wind tunnel section, which is, yeah, that's if you, if you line it up. So like I said, it goes from about negative two to positive two. Um, and then temperature, if you plot temperature, it's gonna be basically a flat line, but with some, some outliers. Again, I think the software doesn't really know what to do. Um, I actually tried with a higher velocity. I tried with a velocity of 100 meters per second at the inlet. And that's basically approaching um, a third of the speed of sound. And still, I wasn't getting any temperature change. So I think there must be some saying. I played around with it for a long time, and I wasn't able to get um, temperature to actually show. Um, I was actually able to get um, some change. If you go to boundary conditions, if you make um, if you make the wall, if you give it like heat flux, if you give it like oops, like six thousand six megawatts per meter squared, then I, know, I probably I don't have to show this, but um, I'll just show you what I found. If you do that, then you'll get um, increase in temperature at the walls, but um, that's not exactly what we're trying to find in this project. I know, I'm aware. Uh, but I'll just show you to, to, to get it over with. Um, but anyway, you if you remake all of those things, um, if you remake the drawing with your model in the center, here I used an airfoil, um, static pressure, total pressure, dynamic pressure, it's all basically the same, but there's just a little um, airfoil in the center. Again, just make sure it's less than 7.5%, which is, yeah, 45 centimeters. Okay. Okay, this is about calculated. So here now, if we go to contours, um, if you plot total temperature, you'll get some increase of temperature at the walls. That's just kind of, I guess it'd be like skin friction, which I don't believe uh, we're, we're attempting to calculate here, but that's an option. Um, but yeah, you just change that back to zero. I have, I have zero heat flux for my ones in the report. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward project. Um, just go through, make all those plots, make all the contours and write the report. All right, that's all. Thank you. Uh...